Welcome back, everybody. I'm excited to be here with the newly minted U.S. Senior Champion, Grandmaster Melikachian, uh, a Southern California um, top coach, and just an overall presence in the chess community in the United States and beyond. Uh, welcome, Melik. Thank you for joining us. Um, thank you. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you, Dylan. I appreciate it. How does it feel to uh, win a national championship? Uh, it feels good. It feels good. I mean, I mean, I said uh, to Yasser, he was laughing. I said, listen, I never won any single national championship in my life. I think uh, once I came um, like a third in Armenia, yeah. like I typed a third, and I never did really actually won anything like, I mean, when I was young, I think I also came like a type for first but never was first uh, in Azerbaijan uh, when I was young. Uh, I think uh, maybe a few times I came as a second or third, but I never won actual like uh, national championship. I mean, I lived in three countries, right? I lived basically whatever, Soviet Union, yeah. Gun, I live in uh, Azerbaijan, and I live in Armenia, and then I moved to US. And I was always hoping before I die to get something like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. I tell you what, uh, when, whenever you're at a certain age, you want to leave something after you, some sort of legacy. And I actually wanted to win it at least one time. That's it. Right, right. A little bit small, but win it. You know, I wanted to. Even so, I said, uh, when I arrived to St. Louis, I said, so listen, I, I came here just to play chess, which is true. Because honestly, I was hoping for a win. I was still hoping, but I, I thought the field is too strong. And... Uh, I mean, it's going to be way more difficult for me, but it happened. Right. And and who were your, your competitors? I know they were super strong grandmasters. I mean, even... Well, I mean, we have a USG. newcomer, right? We have a newcomer from also my my, my former country, from Armenia, Radhan Akopian. Uh, yeah. He's pretty much like living legend, uh, three times Olympic champion, I think three times uh, uh, world youth champion, you know, like 16, 18, 20. Right. And... He also multiple time won it. Was winning like uh, uh, Armenian championship, and I mean he's uh, he also like played like uh, you know the FIDE World Cup. Uh, he yeah. reached like uh, a final stage, and he only lost to Grand Master from Russia back then, uh, Talif Month, uh, right. in the final match. Uh, so yeah, and then we have obviously uh, American legends. We have a Gregory Kaidan of uh, incredible person. Uh, incredible uh, trainer and incredible uh, chess player. Uh, we have like a mighty Alex Chabalov, who, yeah, uh, I mean, <laughs> one of the greatest uh, you know chess players in the United States, four times U.S. champion. Right. Uh, we had um, Joe Benjamin, who actually holds the only uh, record in the United States, winning all three national championships. Wow. Junior, real championship, and the senior ones. Wow. So, yeah, we have like a, and we have also, don't forget, we have also uh, Igor Novikov, who is like, uh, you're formerly from Ukraine, uh, used to be one of the top, top grandmasters in the world, way before Ivanchuk, way before like all those Ukrainian generations. He was like a, one of those like pioneers, you know, uh, back then. Oh, wow. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he's a living legend as well. And uh, yeah, we have obviously Max Lugi. Uh, right. formerly like uh, under 20 uh, junior champion in the world. And we all know Max as a one of the seconds for Gary Kasparov. And uh, these days, Max still remain quite active. Max, uh, one of the best uh, Blitz players, uh, at least in the United States, you know. And Max as well run his own academy in New York, uh, Max Academy. I mean, every single name has a huge tail after him. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Dmitry Gurevich, formerly like uh, knowing uh, as as a uh, he he works for Victor Kochnoy, for instance. Yeah, I mean everyone has something on his like closet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, perhaps the only guy uh, who didn't have a much uh, chest name uh, it was uh, Dark uh, Root. Dark yeah. Root. Yeah. But I mean he was still very strong in national master and he, right. he really was higher than me. And he actually earned his spot qualifying uh, from, uh, I think, uh, qualifying from Irving, right? I, I believe yeah. so. Yeah. So he actually, I mean, went for the qualification uh, stage. He won stage 
And for you to understand, whenever you travel for this tournament, you actually face some other grandmaster. Right. I mean, it's not like you're going to go there, like uh, walking by and then, hey, say hi, and they qualify for US at close. I I actually, <laughs> I was hoping to be qualified for this US senior, but I knew I my rating is dropped uh, significantly. Uh, and I only got spot, they gave me the wild card. Somehow, like a St. Louis Chess Club, people of St. Louis Chess Club still uh, having trust on me. And they're always holding like one spot as a wild card. That's always their privilege. And uh, I, I didn't spoke with anyone, but I assume it's sort of appreciations to me, which we will talk about it. You know, uh, because uh, last year we have done like, uh, uh, we have done huge, like uh, heroic comeback in Olympia with my girls. And my girls got like a third place. We tied for the third with, with, uh, with India team number one. And uh, right. I think it sort of was, uh, this, the way how I say it, it was uh, appreciation for what I have done for U.S. community, and uh, and um, that's that's why um, it, that's why I, I think. Right. Uh, and I also been working with St. Louis Chess Club for for years, you know, helping them this and that. So they may give it to me. I was super happy when I got to open. You know, funny. I told her last day. Uh, <laughs> everyone was laughing. So uh, I have a girl uh, who is playing U.S. Uh, girls junior. Uh, Rui Yang Yang. She is super strong. She got yeah. second place by Rui. And she told me about the dates long ago, back to like beginning of the May. I'm like, hmm, okay. I haven't got any invitation yet. It means probably I'm, I'm out. So, but then my wife wanted to go to the vacation uh, for my birthday, July 6th. And I said, listen, but there is a US, I mean, there is a US senior championship. I might get invitation. So we built the vacation right before arriving from vacation. I was hoping to get that, you know, invitation for the U.S. senior. Yeah. yeah. And, and what do you think? We we are in Vegas for playing this national open. Yeah. One day I open like uh, my email box. I see <laughs> some invitation. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> so I jump. So I immediately reply, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. that's exciting. And then we went for the vacation. We came back. Yeah, I was uh, free of strength, and I I made the right call going to the Vegas. Then vacation. And yeah. then I played well, yeah. Wow, and so and so you came in as the wild card. Yeah. Um, can you describe your strategy a little bit? How to compete with these incredibly strong grandmasters? Well, we we know each other. I mean, I played them so many times. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah, you know, when I when I came to the state, I don't know if you know my history. Uh, between let's say two thousand one and two thousand, I would say ten. I was very active. I right. was very active. I travel very much everywhere and East Coast, West Coast, it doesn't really matter for me. I played all World Opens, I played Chicago, I played all those big stages I played, you know? Yeah. And back then we faced a lot. I played Shaba many times, I played Kaidana many times. Uh, I qualified from US Championship from 2007. I only stopped playing US Championships uh, because they changed the format. They, they made the round robin from 2014, I think. Yeah. Uh, but before 2014, I was qualifying almost every year. Right. So maybe I skipped one year or so. You know, what I'm saying is I, I was very active. I mean, but then obviously ages. And then also, let's say earlier, uh, I was uh, uh, working as a trainer, you know that, but mostly player. Let's mm -hmm. say, for instance, uh, if my back then uh, working hours per week was, I don't know, let's say 20 hours a week. Yeah. Um, between 15, 20 hours a week, something like that back then. Uh, these days, uh, my my shift is like uh, forty hours. Right. I mean, 35, 40 hours easily, right. easily. If not more. So what right. I'm saying is, I simply have no time to travel. Yeah. So, but I mean, I still obviously keeping some. I mean, I also working with uh, uh, with girls. Uh, working with uh, I have a even these days I have like a top students. I have um, international masters. I have a grandmaster student. That helps me a lot to. Uh, to work with them, to follow those new trends and everything. Yeah. And I'll say I follow chess. I still follow chess. I still follow those tournaments um, as much as possible. Let's say tomorrow is going to start like uh, World Cup the after tomorrow, and I'm going to be following very closely World Cup. I mean, this is what I do. This is a uh, professional trainer job. So. Right. Right. But did you have any specific strategy going into the event in terms of yeah. in terms of how you would handle? Yeah, I didn't hide. I told everyone so. I'll, 
And I, I keep encouraging my young, uh, everyone to do the same thing because I said, first, we need to watch out for our, our health, uh, our physicals. And it's what I did. I go to gym. I have my personal trainer, Arvina. Uh, and um, and this has helped me a lot. So she's killing me, but I, I love her. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, I hired a personal trainer. I dropped some weight a little bit. Uh, but, but not, not even weight. I would say I dropped some fat. I dropped right. some fat. Uh, now my body, except my belly a little bit. <laughs> my body, like all muscles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm and... doing great. I'm, 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 I'm in very good physical shape these days. And that's what makes me stay in the game. Uh, yeah. Why, and, why is uh, that so important in an event like U.S. Senior Champions? Listen, um, if you're staying in a close, let's say, I don't know, in hotel or wherever it is, right? You know the physics. Uh, your brain doesn't get uh, oxygen. And just since uh, the way how it works, your brain always needs to get some kind of storage of, uh, of oxygen. And it's using it. And as soon as uh, you're running out of, uh, it's like an oil, you're running out of uh, oxygen, the, uh, basically the brain does, doesn't, doesn't know uh, from, from where to get. So whenever you're physically strong, A, the way how are you spending your oxygen, it's slower because you, you have, you know, and you simply like staying more focused. Right. I mean, this is what I found for me the formula. And the next make an adjustment, I hope it works for me. I never tried it before. I read so much, you know, material, and I came to the conclusion to stop uh, to stop feeding myself uh, like a two hours before the game completely. First, I had always light breakfast, nothing, uh, nothing heavy, and then uh, two hours. Basically, I was doing this uh, light breakfast, work with chess. Uh, whenever you work with chess, uh, I was going to park or like a 20 minutes or something like that just a little bit walk 20 minutes half an hour coming back taking a nap taking a nap and then waking up taking one more time what's going on with the files and then shower and into the game okay it works for me wow yeah and yeah. did you notice that the other guys would have trouble with stamina um other guys that aren't working out on your level like you are well, like I said, uh, some GMs, they, you know, we're not young anymore. <laughs> so obviously any, any, everyone uh, perhaps goes through some personal issues, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, luckily for me, my wife was taking care of my, um, you know, uh, the home and everything. Right. And that means a lot because whenever whenever you back court, it's a taking care of. I mean, you understand, you can you know, you can push your dices, you can push her and you can go on. So since she's taking care of my kids and uh, I don't have any like issues here, luckily my parents are so, so much, I mean, so far healthy. I mean, I kind of uh, have a chance to travel maybe for a year or two or three, you know? Right. So that's why I have decided to, to do that. Um, because for me, like I said, I feel like, um, I cannot say I like feel embarrassed, but I feel bad. Because when I really dropped like 2400, like three feet there, and my, my USCF dropped 2460, uh, you must understand, Dylan, I, I'm not that kind of person. Mm -hmm. I always been over 2600, like USCF, all my life. Right. Most of my life. And uh, my, I think my high peak, like a 2665, something like that. Um, my first ever rating feed there, my first ever rating feed there, when I got my first, it was 2465. Wow. Oh my god! I was solid master, yeah. So what wow. I'm saying is, for me to have a rating like uh, 2400, it's like uh, it's a shame. Yeah, yeah. When you're saying to me how I feel about this company, listen, my knowledge I always believe. I don't, I don't, I'm not hiding. I know a lot, all right. And I always believe I am uh, by knowledge. I'm, I'm this grandmaster, right? Like a 26 plus grandmaster easily. Right. Yeah, perhaps even more than that. All right. It's just, uh, you know, circumstances. It's a life. What can I say? Yeah. It's a life. It's this and that. I mean, kind of, you know, sometimes uh, push you down. But yeah. somehow this time I, it works for perfectly fine. And uh, I won't, I wasn't bothered by family issues uh, in California. I was able to focus on my chest. Right. Um, and that's it. Yeah. Does 
I just want. I'm curious. What are the the big distractions for a grandmaster on your level? That take away from your life, chest? just the life itself. Just regular life, yeah. The family and kids, wife, parents. What, what Anything a, that bothers you? I mean, you, you you say you're coaching forty hours a week. Does that take away from your actual, you know, growth and development, or even maintaining your abilities? Uh, I don't know. I think it actually uh, keeps me in a in a tonus, you know, in tone, and actually uh, makes myself better because you always need to be prepared for the lesson. You always need right. to do, particularly whenever you let's say dealing with those, uh, you know, advanced chess players. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let's say, yeah, today I had like a deal like with twenty one hundred um, uh, two people in a row. I mean, it takes some. It takes some time for, for you to understand the games and and by the way, whenever you're giving advices for those like uh, let's say strong experts or masters or even more, you must understand they listen to you and uh, you can't give like wrong advice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it makes you be like in in a in a tonus. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's interesting because I've heard a lot of coaches say that it, it takes away from their their play, but you're no, saying no, no, it keeps no. you in shape. Listen, Nakamura does streaming like what? How many hours a week? <laughs> Yeah. Everyone was expecting Nakamura to be out of chess when he played the first, when he got the first wild card from Fide when he played the Grand uh, Grand uh, Suisse or whatever it is. Yeah. They were laughing. Oh, Nakamura will come. We're going to kick his butt. So who kicked whose butt? <laughs> That's right. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Because Nakamura, whenever he is streaming, he is he always in a, in a, in a, in a, in a mode. He always yeah. like a, he always like focused. I mean, and that's by the way. By the way, a streaming made Nakamura being a beast. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, he's a clearly these days by any means, by any like uh, like measure, whatever you take, he's number one in the US. Right, right. Which is a surprise. Or were you surprised or no? That you weren't surprised that he passed passed Fab, Fabi. I always thought that there's only one person who can basically like compete him, uh, like being number one. I think it's Fabi. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, again, this is my like uh, right. just my opinion. Right, it's no perhaps no Fabi, disrespect to anybody else, of course. Yeah, yeah. perhaps Fabi knows more, but uh, Nakamura, it's way more focused. I right. think Nakamura is just a uh, it's machine. Right. You know. Yeah, and I think I uh, yeah, I mean, my opinion these days, Nakamura is number one for sure. Yeah. Okay, I want to yeah. get back to you a little bit, Malik, because one of the things that's very fascinating to me. Is that you? You're a super well-established coach and player in the United States, but you grew up in the Soviet system. Um, right. Um, can you tell us what it was what it was like to learn chess at that time, and maybe even some of your early coaches? Well, yeah. I mean, I'm part of Soviet school or Russian school, I would say. Yeah. Uh, uh, the major influence on me clearly came uh, for like attending to the. Uh, School in Moscow, uh, Tiran Petrosian Academy for two years. Yeah, about six sessions, I would say, I think. Okay. Uh, I was also like um, kind of uh, impacted. I mean, I would say the coaches which made a huger impact to me, it's uh, it's uh, Alexander Shakarov uh, from uh, Baku, Azerbaijan back then. Uh, he taught me how to handle openings. Uh, and uh, I mean, since then, not much changed, you know. Yeah, and uh, I kind of start. I mean, I understand um, the concepts how we work with openings and everything. And Shakara was amazing, and he was. That's why he was one of the seconds for Gary Kasparov team. Um, then obviously chess. I've been taught by mostly by uh, international master and the legend, uh, Russian legend, uh, Alexander Nikitin, who also worked for Gary Kasparov. One right. of the main. I, I mean, he actually was the main coach for Gary Kasparov. He was like truly a legend. He only passed away recently in this um, unfortunate, you know, COVID. Uh, he got COVID at very oh, late man. age and, and he passed away, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So he was my uh, mentor. Uh, I mean, obviously, and then obviously, a very young age, uh, passed away to Ramatanj Petrosia, you know, the, the yeah. old ninth uh, champion. So his lessons, his influence uh, also helped me a lot. I mean, I was obviously hoping, as, as everyone else, to be a good chess player, strong chess player. But I mean, somehow, the last circumstances, because I'm a refugee. Right. Uh, um, 
we lost everything back to Baku because uh, I am Armenian, you know that, it's so history. Yeah, yeah. And um, we sort of run away uh, from being killed. Yeah. Uh, my aunt, uh, she got killed. She got, you know, very much, uh, yeah. Oh, man. So anyway, it's a, it's a history, um, happens. Uh, I'm not blaming anyone, I'm just blaming Soviets and everything would collapse and the world would Yeah, it. yeah, because I was wondering like what, uh, you know, obviously, a lot of the Armenian community came over here during the war and, and um, because of the collapse of the Soviet Union and how, how that, uh, you know, because so many players ended up in the United States. Um, right. Did, did that, did that, you know, did, were you guys bolstered? Obviously it disrupted your lives completely. Right. But were you guys bol bolstered by that community coming over here? No, I mean, I mean, I, I actually made the decision to come to the state. Um, I would say very well calculated because I thought uh, I could stay in Russia. I could stay, I don't know, in any other country. But I thought, A, uh, there is no trust in, in any republic, any country from former Soviet Union. Right. I think all of them corrupted. All of this, all of them, no matter which country you, you named for me. There is no, every single country formerly republic from soviet union the corruption level it's super high mm -hmm. uh, anyway whatever so yeah, yeah in yeah. 2000 i have decided that because the only reason why it kept me in armenia for too long uh, uh i was i was going to go from armenia long ago like even in the 90s but yeah. somehow whenever i graduated my university i met leona ronia oh right right so and i didn't have any place to stay and uh i was what 21 22 something like that wow yeah and uh and it was very difficult for me to travel for to play tournaments uh, i wasn't ready yet my family was not established uh this and that so and i have decided to stay in armenia um i mean i'm not regretting my decision i think it was fine i actually i'm happy and i found Livon. i mean i work with Livon. Yeah. yeah, I took him like all the way for, from uh, zero level to like almost grandmaster. Wait, how, how old was Levon when you met him? <laughs> well, I'll tell you. No, it's okay. Uh, I think uh, I'm trying to recall exactly the date. I think it was uh, our first trip to World Youth was 1992, uh, Duisburg, Germany. Wow. So take one year before, it's 1991, summer. Oh my uh, gosh. Yeah, let's say June, July, something like that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And so yeah, because 18, 18, 88, I came in the end of the year. 89, 90, I was uh, working mostly with uh, uh, some uh, Armenian top uh, players like Elena Danielan. Right. I was working with uh, my friend Horik, Horik uh, Danielan as well. So those years I've been working for like, I, I became a coach at a very young age. I kind of, I couldn't like travel. I didn't have money to travel for tournaments. Right. And I only play in local uh, tournaments in Armenia. And I, 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 I kind of uh, uh, work with my, uh, for my students. That's it. But then I start to kind of uh, make some money, this and that. And with Levon, um, yeah, like I said, it was mutual agreement. I helped him a lot and they helped me as well. I live with them. And also I, I was able to save some money, travel for some tournaments. We travel for, together some tournaments. So we split like in 1997 or simply because uh, Leo started to get much better than me. Wow. So and, you worked with him for six, seven years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's only amazing. like uh, because he got started to get better, I, I couldn't basically teach him. So yeah, yeah, of course. You got to pass him on at that point. Yeah. But uh, when I, when I, we split, then I figure out uh, there is nothing for me. I still remain in Armenia for a couple of years. Um, I, I wanted to prove something. I think, it, but it was difficult for me to like 1997, eight, nine, but I still managed to uh, have a nice group of kids. I I managed to train a uh, new generation like Armand Pash uh, 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 Pashikian, uh, Tera Petrojan. So it's still like, uh, I mean, Tera Garaman, who is right now in the French, all of them grandmaster, by the way. Wow. So, and Pashikian, by the way, right now, it's a um, head coach of uh, Armenian national team. So he actually took something from me. Wow. <laughs> yeah, my method and everything. Yeah, what I'm saying is, um, yeah, but but around 2000, I realized there is nothing left. So, right. 
uh, and I just need, need to leave. Hmm. And then you, did you come straight to you know, to the California or did you come somewhere yeah, else? Yeah, straight first? here. Because I have a cousin here. I I just came here, but I knew I'm not going to return. I came here. I think it was like a, a national open or something like that. Or not, not American open. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, something like that. I came in January, by the way. Uh, yeah. But when I came here, I knew I'm not going to come back. Well, is it because you went to the beach? <laughs> it's just oh, a joke. I went to the but... beach. It's just... Uh... <laughs> Just yeah. a joke. Yeah, yeah. Like start from uh, from over. I mean, from zero. So yeah, right, right. You know, I read so many stories about like you know how people travel to America and uh, with no money in the pocket, right. and stuff like that. So this right. is for me as well. And look what you've built. You've got a yep. whole library of chess books behind you and trophies. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's just a part of it. I have way more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah. So then, so then, when you came, when you got here, how did you get started? Did you were you just playing tournaments as well, and then and then picked up a few co uh, students here and there? Yeah, I mean, obviously for every comer for the United States, uh, most typical like cross year, I would say something like that, right? I mean, uh, I was uh, I was doing anything to survive. Yeah, I, I don't want to say what I'm doing, but anything. And meantime, I was trying to play some tournaments, but trying to build a name. Right. You probably remember this first year, so. But I think the the biggest uh, ability tournament came 2001 uh, when um, I won American Open. Right. And then, if you remember, it was different American Open than these days. It right. was big. It was big. Yeah, it was huge then. Yeah. I think John Hillary was organizing them, right? If yeah. I'm mistaken. Yeah. John Hillary, I think it was also another person. I forgot what his name. Um, he also passed away. I, I forgot. I will, I will remember it. Anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, back then it was a big event. Uh, I think uh, I actually qualified for the championship from wow. that tournament. Wow. But they didn't let me because I didn't have a green card yet. Oh, and, right, right. And uh, by the law, I needed to have a green card and 48 months uh, residency. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. But it was definitely far away from me. So... But what I'm saying is officially I qualified right away in the first year of America. Wow, oh, but then that was very strong I am. Right. I could be GM long ago. I mean, my yeah. strength was I, I could be GM back to the 90s. But I mean, like I said, I mean, I I always uh, been busy with Levon and I just played this and that. Uh, but I had some GM norms. So anyway, yeah, I mean, I think uh, I completed my GM title within a few years. Yeah. I think I had that in 2005 already been, I think I got GM requirements 2003 or four, but FIDE took me like a, about a year to kind of uh, fight well, with that. Well, that, that's super interesting though, because you were GM strength from almost your first tournament, like ever, right? You were 24 something. Yeah, yeah, I mean, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think <laughs> like... I was, uh, yeah. Uh, no, I, I was, I would say I was a GM strength from early 90s. Yeah, that's what but that's what I was somehow, thinking. Like I said, I didn't really have a time and money to travel. And, well, well, uh, were there less tournaments though, like norm tournaments and things like that? For my GM? Yeah, for to get yeah to finish the title. Yeah, I think I got my GM norms playing in a Goofield Memorial in Los Angeles. Then I traveled for uh, Kansas. I, I had my GM norm in there, uh, and then uh, I played also four one. Uh, last one, it was uh, uh, round robin tournament in Los Angeles, 2004. But early one, I had 1996 uh, Russian Cup in Moscow. Okay. So like four okay. GM norms. <laughs> four of them, yeah. Uh... Yeah. But the, 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 the reason is when I played the first time out of three, they said I cheated on uh, 1996 Moscow. Oh, my gosh. My cheating basically was I posted like uh, because some of the people uh, – Change the federation. Oh. I just I just made the uh, papers. They asked me to to bring the paper with signed the arbiter. I said, how I can going to do that if I see. it was back to 1996. Yeah. So I downloaded the cross table from uh, from chair space. I made and then I downloaded that it was showing different nations, different um, federations. But they didn't say no. This is cheating. Uh, they accused me. He wrote me some email back then. I forgot the name. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it was a fight. It was a fight, and while a fight was uh, going on, I got fourth norm. 
and then I submitted my fourth norm, and they just completed everything. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, okay, that's kind of interesting. What do you think of that kind of bu bureaucracy in chess? It, it seems it's there's a, a lot of, of it. Life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you just need to fight with them, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you need to fight with them. But I mean, back then I, I asked many people. I mean, I asked, uh, I think the guy who helped me build Callahan, Callahan. I think back then he was like uh, some of the, uh, I think he, he was like a Michael Hodorkowski. Uh, I think something like that, the position general in a general assembly or okay. something like that. Anyway, yeah. he helped me a lot and, um, and they pushed the feeder. I also ask like uh, I asked. Um, I think I asked Leon uh and he also kind of. Uh, I thought. I mean, in case, yeah. So anyway, I asked all people around to help me to to do right. that. Right. How did it feel when you finally got it? Relieved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's listen, Dylan. It's like imagine this. You know you deserve something. You know it's your earn, but you know because of some people, they're not giving it to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. and finally, whenever you are getting it, it's like, all right, so you were right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. I have Italian blood, so I get angry about those things. But, <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway, I, I don't yeah. blame anyone. Like I said, I, yeah. I, I'm not the guy who is going to uh, be right. kind of about anyone. So Right, yeah, well, you're the most one of the most good-natured guys in, in chess. Um, how how do you keep your, your, your sense of humor and... I mean, just generally, like, you are out there, you're friends with so many people, you know so many right. people, you're always kind to people. I mean, wh how do you keep that even in the spirit of competition? Dylan, life is too difficult to collect all those negative mm. stuff in you. Mm -hmm. Because the, the human body sucking everything, all information, the brain, everything. And if you're going to suck more negative stuff in you, you're going to produce negative stuff outside. Out. Right. So just uh, filter it. Right. Every time whenever you want to complain about your life, think this way. How many people have simply no hopes to survive in one day? They don't know if they're right. going to survive or not. Right. Yeah. That's it. You think they have a different life than you? Or they, do you think they have a two lives or three lives? Everyone has a one heart, one life, same blood. Right. Isn't it? Yeah. So what true. I'm saying is I always, uh, it's more philosophy. Every time whenever you want to cry, stay strong and stay stay happy. Yeah. I mean, you, you live in heaven. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we live in heaven. Right. I mean, people don't know many countries where... The world is different, right? So I think we gotta be happy where we are, and uh, that's you're supposed to like a show appreciation. Yeah, yeah. You know that... what I'm saying every time I had like many stories, like when people uh, blame America for everything or this and that, this and that. I said, listen, if you blame America so much, then what the heck are you doing here? <laughs> Just get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Simple. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, yeah, it's it's. Uh, I mean, we're lucky. Well, listen, when when I blame blame, uh, let's say Armenia for Armenia, you know, for me personally, I didn't work out. I mean, okay, maybe I'm a traitor, maybe I'm a bad person, but I could. I said, you know what? I'm not gonna fight. I'm not gonna do anything. I can't. I, I'm get tired of this. Yeah. So I just left the country. That's it. Right. Right. For yeah. me, it's very simple. You know, the, I said the same thing in the more in, in the last interview to to like. Um, uh, for St. Louis, I said, "At more you're getting, at more you're living in your life." Let's say I'm 53. What I learned for myself: every time if I see wrong person around me, I'm cutting loose on him. I'm not. I'm not gonna deal with him. I'm not gonna talk to him. Right. I I don't wanna like deal with people with bad energy, with uh, bad uh, karma or whatever it is. That's it. Right. Well, I, I mean, don't have time for that. And yeah, you don't have time. I mean, you're coaching so much and you're playing so much. So and I have a kids to raise. So, so whatever. Yeah, and you have. I mean, how many kids do you have? Just for the for the record, so that you can be proud of be a proud dad. 
You mean all together? Yeah, yeah. Well, five. Five, wow. Five. How many boys, how many First girls? First marriage and second marriage, yeah. How many boys, well, how many right, girls? Right uh, right now, it's only two. Okay. Uh, yeah, right now. Or three are out of the house. Yeah, last girl. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I have a two boys from first marriage. Uh, two, uh, I mean, uh, one boy, my stepson, he's son, like son to me, and um, and uh, my second marriage, I have a two boy. I mean, a boy and girl. Finally. Wow, that's a. I mean, what a what a lot to balance with your chess <laughs> and the kids, because <laughs> I right. teach kids right. and it's hard just to teach them for an hour. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, I know. Okay, I want to know what what one or two accomplishments you're the most proud of is in on the coaching side well i uh i mean uh coaching is just proud i don't know how to start uh well obviously with aronia it's probably the 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 finest success in my life and yeah early stage. um i learned a lot on him as well uh they won won uh, multiple world youth championships and the one uh was simply a beast you know yeah and um I would say uh, in America, my biggest one was uh, taking Steven Zorko all the way to Grandmaster, helping Caden Trove to winning like World U. Yeah. Uh, helping, uh, helping Andrew Hong uh, becoming very really strong, uh, helping to Christopher Yu, like as individuals. Yeah. Uh, anyway, she she was incredible. And, yeah. Um, yeah, incredible. One of her results, what she did in Uruguay, 10 and a half out of 11, it's all. Or me very much we prepare like i was waking up in the morning like 5 p.m just to prepare her wow that's incredible yeah, <laughs> yeah. and so uh, helping her explaining her sending her file and as in a funniest part when she was in uruguay i was teaching cap in bay area so i imagine i had to like to wake up early morning uh give her a lesson prepare her to the game and then drive i mean kind of for hell i mean try to, to the camp teach other kids in the oh area my, oh my gosh so, yeah so yeah as a uh, team uh i think in 2010 uh, i was invited to teach a team uh, to coach team and uh, yeah i mean right away in 2010 we got the third place we kept a third uh third to, five, to fifth we came i think uh fifth uh on tie breaks unfortunately um and but this time it's a Chennai was also the, the best in my opinion because in Chennai it was very strong Olympiad and we had fantastic run actually right. initially we got we got screwed we got played bad, badly but then our girls uh, somehow they found the you know the rhythm and everything and we won last several matches and um, we tied up for third and uh, between third and four the only like a tie break like a or whatever like one point or half point I forgot uh gave like a uh, actual bronze to an indian team oh man yeah but that's it's still amazing results you know it's still amazing result but yeah. this was my top uh, as a as a coach but I, again like as an individuals I, I raced in the us like at least i helped to be grandmaster maybe like four or five individuals wow that's incredible right and the multiple ims multiple ims wow i even don't know like i don't remember like how many ims and i don't remember like how many like national masters? Maybe like over like forty national masters. Wow, that's just that's just absolutely prolific. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you do you feel like you get the respect that you deserve for 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 what? Yeah, what that's another topic just to talk about. It. You know, the reason why I kind of stopped playing tournaments uh, because I always feel like disrespected. For instance, like carry on your chess back, carry on your uh, I mean chess clock and uh, right. i feel it's kind of uh it's not right i always feel like uh grandmas no i'm not sure like every grandmas i don't know about it uh but let's say if someone have done something for community i think community is supposed to kind of treat them back as well you know yeah that's why i believe i said the same thing the last year to american open i said listen uh if you give me me a stage and i i, I lost the game or i do the game and you're going to put me like uh, among the others. I am not going to do that. I'm not going to come. I'm not going to play. Quite simple. It's not because I'm greedy, not because I'm prima donna. It's just because I believe uh, you make a name on this tournament because of us. 
So yeah. and that, if that's the case, so we're supposed to stay on the stage no matter how we play. Quite simple. Yeah. And I think uh, American Open, uh, the Alfred all time, he kind of uh, and his family, they kind of listen to me. They kind of respect me. And they kind of uh, did what I asked him to do. Right. Yeah, this is the thing. Another thing is um, I'm tired to, this, again, this is me. Uh, yeah. Dealer. yeah. I'm not saying uh, I am like 100% right, but this is the way how I say it. I don't want to drive and play tournament by driving every day with my, my car, driving back and forth. I think I'm getting tired. So I always ask if, you, if any conditions could be given to me. Some people keep saying, oh my gosh, what condition? Look at your rating. Thank you. That's it. Don't continue. You know, I get it. I heard you. Thank you very much. Bye. I mean, for me, quite simple. I'm I'm traveling for the events where, like I said, I am respected. It means yeah. like they give me a certain conditions. If you right. give me to me conditions, I come for you. I come for your tournament. I'll play. If there is no condition exists or you don't give me any condition, well, thank you very much. Uh, let young people go there and play. I'm busy enough to. What I'm trying to say is this: for me, every time when I go for the tournament, it's sort of these days at least it's sacrifice because I can stay home and make let's say more money than travel for your tournament and play tournament. Because I understand most likely if I travel for your tournament, those young kids will pass me, they will get the money, and I'm, I'll be out of money. Right. So right. what I'm doing, yeah, what I'm doing, I'm actually doing going there for fun, and I want to just uh, kind of support you organizing your event. Right. If you believe my support to you is valuable, then you treat me as well. If you believe my support to you is whatever, then fine, sure. Everyone gets it what he wants. Why why do you think American chess has not caught up with with other countries in in the respect of chess professionals? We learn need to have a culture. We don't have a culture yet here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, we still like uh, acting like a cowboys, you know. Yeah. So we yeah. need to, we need to, yeah, we need to kind of uh, uh, <laughs> learn something, some other languages. Right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Well. So I... because... Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. That's. I mean, but we learning. We learning. Uh, and like I said, uh, we're getting better. Uh, that's why I travel to certain like destinations because I know people are uh, really respectful. Yeah, let's say National Open, Alan Lasso family. Uh, I don't know what people think that I see some posts like on the Facebook, this and that, but I don't really care because personally, for me, uh, lots of family and all these people who organize the National Open they treat me super well, right? Right, and that's why every summer I'm going to uh to Las Vegas, right? So it's very simple. Or let's say, strange place in Reno, Nevada. Yeah, uh, yeah, amazing guy Jerry Weichel. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry Weichel. If I if I tell Jerry, uh, Jerry, do you have any spots available for me? And if he, trust me, if he does have a spot available for me, he's going to give it to me right away. Right. That's it. Let's say he he she texted me. Let's say okay, in October there is a, a Simon and hotel and this and that. Please come. Yeah. Here we go. Why not? You know, like I said, if people treat you well. You have a nice attitude. You kind yeah. of, uh, you want to also play a game. Yeah. Like, what about St. Louis? Listen, because St. Louis is the amazing. The people who works for this organization, exceptional. Yeah. Every single one. Exceptional people over there. And the way how they treat you, you see the difference. And whenever they treat you so well, you actually want to kind of show them appreciation and you're doing your best to tell them, to show them, or oh, you know what, your uh, your kindness, uh, I mean, it was worth it enough. You know what I'm saying? Right. Something like that. Right. I mean, it's, it's a mutual. Right. Yeah, and we see organizations like that springing up as well in Charlotte. Yeah, I'm just hoping like yeah. people like, like if we would have an organization like in St. Louis, if we didn't have like a, let's say I heard uh, many good things about Charlotte Chess Center. Yeah, yeah. In North Carolina. Right. I'm actually never been there. Oh just, wow. Just before this, before meetings with you, uh, I actually like I sent an email to uh, my good uh, fl uh, friend Walter Hyde, you know, and uh, I, I wanted to ask him to 
uh, if they can give it to me some conditions like for November. I, I actually would travel for US Masters. Oh, right. First time oh. I never travel. I never played oh. there, but I want to I start it. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but I heard many things about Charlotte. I many uh, think about Peter. So, and uh, I want to, I want to try these people. I want to see like uh, what's going on. So, so do you, do you think you have like a second win, a second life for your, your, your own chess play? Like, I want to play tournaments this day. If I want to play, I'm not playing them too often. And I want to play every time to enjoy. Right, right. So I am going to find the right tournament, the right people to play. I am not uh, after St. Louis. I came, this is my conclusion for my future travels. I'm stopping playing any uh, those uh, small events in yeah. California, in the West Coast. Or right. It doesn't really matter. Right. I'm tired. Yeah. I'm tired traveling those uh, small tournaments, uh, uh, dealing with uh, unprofessional organizers. You know, that's it. Yeah. The only exception, perhaps, uh, from that range is going to be like more or less Reno, but Reno it's a uh, sort of you know better quality tournament. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. I'll be playing only like big stage or no. Yeah, Reno is just very fun too. <laughs> it's a fun tournament. That's it. Uh, I'm pretty national open. I'm thinking to go to uh, North America. Open. Even, even honestly, I don't like the organization uh, of Bill Deutschberg, uh, the way how they are going. Or simply because of those kill you on your back, kill you on this, kill you on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They don't provide yeah. sets, do they? No. Right. Uh, that's the only thing they have to, but they, they will never do that. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah, it's not not part of their business model. Um, I don't want to take too much more of your time, Melik, but I wanna I do want to end on a fun note. Um, who do you think the the if an American can win the world championship in the next ten years, who do you think can do it? I already told you, Hikaru. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it was off camera. <laughs> you told me off camera. <laughs> oh, Hikaru. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hikaru. You think Hikaru can do it? Oh yeah, I think. Uh... I think he found the balance of his life. You know, finally, yeah. he can be more focused. And I think only one person, in my opinion, I might be mistaken, one person who was very much inconvenient uh, for, for Hikaru, it was Magnus. Yeah, of course. But since Magnus officially out of competition, right? I think Hikaru can do it. No, another fun question. You think Magnus would come back to play Hikaru? You mean for World Championship? Yeah. No. No, you don't think no. I think Magnus down. He, he's just yeah. tired. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Magnus got everything. Magnus was to have a fun. Yeah, true. Magnus, it's uh, for <laughs> after those titles, which he haven't won yet. Magnus for World Cup. Right. He's going to be playing World Cup until he wins. Right, right. That's true. I don't know. You know what? I'll tell you what. Magnus might be coming back for World Championship. If you say Magnus, hey, listen. There's a 10 millions. Yes. And the winner gets, let's say, 7 millions or 6 million, something like that. Right, right. You're right about That's that. It. Yeah. yeah. It has to be very big money. Yeah. Very you big money. You know, it's money. like a famous joke, right? I will never do it for money. <laughs> At least not for this money. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. for bigger money, <laughs> mm, I'll do it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, thank you for joining me today, Malik. I really appreciate it. And, um, uh, one more time, can you tell us how you feel to be the newly minted U.S. senior champion? Well, it was amazing. Uh, I can dream come true. Always believe in you. Uh, even if some things goes not as as it as as you want it to, still stay 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 tough on your dreams, you know. And you're gonna make it. That's fantastic. Well, thank you, Melik, and thank you for your service to the community, producing all those amazing players. We appreciate it. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.